Today we discuss the Fender American Pro 2 P Bass. Hey, James G here with Tarpley Music in Fort Worth, Texas. And remember, you can always find us online at tarpleymusic.com. Uh, do us a huge favor and subscribe to the channel below if you haven't done so already. It really, really uh, helps us and the channel out. So this is the Fender American Professional 2. So this is basically one of the top bases that you, you can get before you get into like a Fender custom shop. A uh, little bit of hi history, if you're not familiar with the P bases, P stands for precision. So 1951, Leo Fender had the idea of putting some sort of a precision bass together. Well, what he meant by that was up until that point, it was all upright basses. Early rock bands, jazz combos, big bands and stuff, their bass player was literally using an orchestral size upright, which is, of course, fretless. Um, so it takes a lot of to get those notes in there, you know, perfectly to get them right on. So with him turning it like an electric guitar, putting frets on it, to make very precise notes, hence the precision bass. Um, and it actually took off pretty well. Uh, one of the big first, uh, Lionel Hampton's band, he was a band leader, he was one of the first bands to, to really use that. And his bass player said that he used it on a gig that same day he got it. So he was able, he's like, yeah, man, just turn it around. The strings are the same. And I was able to play it right away. And that's just killer to, to think that. Um, there was even one quote about when they were doing a concert where a guy said, you know, it's weird. I hear a bass, but I don't see one, but I see two guitars, and it was really confusing. You have to think nothing like this was, was being done. Well, what's the beauty of this? Well, bands were getting louder, right? And that, uh, you know, if you're miking that upright bass is your only option. So they were just disappearing in the mix, not to mention huge expensive instrument that you have to pack and put under a bus or truck or whatever you're doing. So it was really, really great timing, especially with the explosion of rock and roll, you know, because you see a lot of old rock and roll trios and it is a jazz drummer and an upright guy and then the rock and roll guy because that's all there were for drummers and bass players. There were no rock and roll bass player drummers yet. And so it's, it's a fascinating history of that whole thing to come up with a design that pretty much hasn't changed too much. So in 51, when he first did the P bass, he took like a telly style headstock neck. He came up with the scale length of 34 inches, and that scale length is from the saddle to the bridge. And he put it telly style neck, one single, you know, pickup like that. He had, there's a little thumb rest here. It was actually wood, one screw. And that was pretty much it. And that didn't really change uh, much at all until uh, 57 the explosion of the Strat. So the P bass switched to the Strat style headstock and then went into the split coil like this that we see that's the famous now. So there's this first one has two strings and then the other one has two strings. And this pickup design for the most part has not changed um, at all, even though they've modified the pickup itself and stuff. But the design, because it's bone, it's solid, great bass tone. You have a volume knob. You've got your tone knob to roll off a little bit of the highs output jack or input jack and that is it so this particular model of course like i said is one of the top p bases you can get in the the main line fender stuff it's a full alder body uh, it's got great rounded contours to it so it's extremely to play whether you're sitting or standing and this it has the new modified heel right here so you know, the, the old joke of for bass players that there's no money above the fifth fret, right? Well, a lot of bass players like getting up in the fifth, past the fifth fret, so they want to get up here and they're doing more solo playing, and bass playing has just gone in the last several decades to a whole nother level. But with this modified heel, you can get way up there comfortably uh, and does does not get in the way at all. So it's a really beautiful shape. Uh, it's a maple neck with the rosewood fretboard, um, open machine style tuners, very, very solid. These are actually uh, tapered post here. Uh, the, the taper basically is you put the, it forces the string to, to go down and it holds a much, much tighter, um, tighter up here for holding in tune and does a killer job of it. I haven't had to tune this at all since we started uh, filming and doing rehearsals for the, this particular uh, video and everything. So it's been killer. And then, um, like I said before, this bass is a little bit more modernized version of it. So this is actually strung through. Uh, this is the high mass vintage bridge. A uh, lot of sustain and a lot of attack from this because it's so far back. 
and then being strung through like that and with the angles that you this this note will just play uh forever and forever and forever so and these are referred to as the v mod two split single coils uh because it's really just one single coil pickup that's split and the reason for that is the net comfort and this you can get a lot more precise of where the actual uh, the coils are and things like that but just really cool and this is actually really cool um a finish they have on it. there's several different finishes they have some of the finishes do offer maple neck as well so uh maple on a base just like a you know a telly or a striding thing is little bitey can be a little punchier so a lot of people do prefer uh, a maple neck and like that but the p base has been through rock it's been through country it's been through blues it's been through so many styles it's just a great perfect one sig one sig uh signal and you get a lot of bass tone out of it so uh, how we have it going right now, I'm going to play just a little bit of this. Uh, there's not a lot of settings per se. It's got that one tone knob. But just to give an idea of the bass itself is we're going right into a DI box, right into the interface in the Studio One, and that's it. So you're really going to get, I got home. Hey, man, I need to write a, I need to put a bass part to this thing. You plug straight into, straight into your interface and start playing. This is what you're going to get here. So this is everything all the way open, volume and tone knob. And you can hear very consistent volume all the way up. If I want to roll a little bit of that high off, I can. I can get it, but you hear it almost gets a little muddyish. So you can definitely shape the sound a little bit, but for the most part, it's like I need a great killer fat bass tone, and this is it. All right, we've heard the bass on its own, so now we want to hear what it sounds like with some rhythm tracks that I recorded earlier. All right, hit it, boys. Whenever I think fat Fender P bass sound, this is exactly what I'm thinking. Um, it's been on countless, countless albums, countless tours, countless players. Uh, it's one of those that every bass player, professional bass player, probably has at least one P bass in his arsenal of, of basses, more than likely. Of course, you can get it in a five string as well if you need that low B. You know, uh, you, can, you can get the... Same guitar, but with low B on it. So there's a lot of versatility of it there. Uh, very comfortable, 9.5 radius here. And this neck, that it's actually a 1963 C-style neck, and it's so comfortable. It's basically been called the golden standard of bass neck profiles for a reason. It feels really, really, really good. And that's actually probably one of my favorite things about this particular one is the, is the neck itself. And of course, by no stretch am I a uh, pro, pro bass player. Um, but when I do a lot of recordings at home and I'll play my own bass parts, um, that's really what I want is a nice, just full C style neck like that because I feel like I can really dig in because the strings are obviously a lot bigger. Um, and I got pretty small hands, uh, still pretty comfortable. But then again, you'll see guys with big old huge fingers will play on a, a 63C neck like this very comfortably. So it's just an all around perfect bass for that. I need that one great tone that can kind of cover everything. Like I said, you're going to probably have a P bass of some sort in your arsenal. So it's a killer bass. We got a lot of great basses up here uh, by Fender, uh, P and J basses. Uh, that you need to come check out. So if you get a chance, come on in. If you're new to bass or if you're old to bass, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we've got bass amps. So you can just sit down, plug in, and get a feel for this. And uh, one of the most beautiful things about the P-Bass to me is the simplicity. 
Uh, so it's much like the Telecaster where it's just it's you, your fingers, and some strings. And that's really, really what it is. And so what they did was took that basic concept and said, we're going to use the best maple, best rosewood fretboard, a nice, perfect alder body, and do all the best uh, specs for that. And I think that's what they did. So I uh, hope you learned something. If you uh, didn't know about P basses or precision basses, you have a little bit more info now. Uh, sometimes I just like going off on guitar history because it's so amazing to me where stuff has come from. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Make sure you like the video. Uh, subscribe to our channel below if you haven't done so already and I would love to watch more videos as they drop and if you put turn on notifications you'll get notified when they do. We'll see you on the next one.